Hi everyone, Paul McVay here and I'm delighted to say I'm joined with Jake Humphrey and Jake got seven questions for okay. you. Okay. Just gonna sort of throw far these away, at you. Yeah, far see, away. see what you make of them. Okay, so what do you feel are the most important personal qualities that drive success in people? I think I think it's to I think it's to um, to set yourself goals and then try and achieve them. I mean, I you know I've got my wallet sitting here, and I've got in my wallet from years ago a set of goals that I that I settled upon when I worked at a local TV channel here in Norwich. And one of those is get a job working for the BBC. Right. I can't find it now, That's but okay, it's in there. Can't find it, but and, um, it's good that you have it. And you know, I, I I wrote that when I was sort of 17, 18 years of age, and it was really important to have that written down, to have those to have those sort of goals because. I think if you don't have something to aim for or something that you want to achieve, I think it's really difficult to get there. So I'm, I'm a firm believer that setting personal goals is the only way you're ever going to achieve them. Okay, brilliant. That's what we uh, advocate that. So Excellent, I'm good, lovely, that. good. So what is the most valuable piece of advice or wisdom yeah. you've ever received and who did you receive this from? I think it was the day that I left the job I did here in Norwich working for a digital channel called Rapture TV and the boss was a guy called Adam and I was leaving to go down to London and to, to embark on something new and very different and I told him I was a bit nervous about it and he said look if I can give you one piece of advice for your whole life it is don't sit in the comfy chair and I think that's what's inspired me for the stuff that I've done in more recent times. You know, it was a big decision for me, for example, to take the Formula One job. It could have, I could have felt like it was a bit too much too soon, but I thought to myself, right, don't sit in the comfy chair. You know, take on a challenge that is going to test you to your very limits. Um, and I did that, and I'm, and I'm glad I did. So if I could give anyone any piece of advice, it would be don't take the easy option. You know, don't just think, oh, I'm going to do that because it means I can be home by five o'clock in the evening. Or if I do that, I can you know, make sure that I never have to work weekends, or if I do that, I'm never going to be stressed. Mm. You're also not going to push yourself to achieve your maximum. It's brilliant. That is a really good point, because whenever you say that about don't sit in your comfy chair, I'd like to say even more positive way to say it is actually to push yourself, you know, to yeah. step out of your comfort zone. So that's, that's, that's a great piece of advice. So who's someone you strongly admire, and why? I think if I was to pick someone I really admire, it would be Bear Grylls. Uh, really? Or Sir Richard Branson. One right. of the two, because when I was younger, um, and I really wanted to, to do something special. I read their autobiographies. Bear Grylls was called Facing Up, and it was about a young guy who broke his back uh, doing a skydive for the military. And um, he, I know you're doing a skydive, don't get too nervous. <laughs> and uh, as he was laying in his bed, he put up a picture of Mount Everest by the bed. And he told the nurses, I'm going to climb Mount Everest. And they were like, yeah, OK, sweetheart, let's just look after your back, shall we? They never thought it would happen. And he believed it would, and that was... And that was really inspiring for me. And, you know, my own personal Everest was getting to the BBC and getting a job on BBC Sports. And so it doesn't have to be climbing a bloody mountain. It has to just be your own personal goal. Um, and the other one is Richard Branson, who just looked at things from a completely different angle. You know, he wanted to set up a record store that was like nothing else, and he did. You know, and I think looking outside the box and just because everyone does it that way, do it that way. See if it works. If it doesn't, go that way. Because you know that works, so why not try something different? Well, that's really interesting because what, what I'm doing now in terms of my speaking and presenting and stuff is that whenever I read James Cairns' yeah. autobiography and he, he, his dad gave him the exact same piece of advice. He was like, whenever everyone's turning left, you turn right. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. the exact same Because if, you know, if right is a dead end, just go left. Because yeah. you can always go there because yeah. you know it, everyone else has gone down there, so you know it works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so talked a little bit about goals there earlier, so why do you feel it is so, so important to actually have the targets and goals in your life? I just think that unless you've got goals and targets, it's so easy to sort of mill around and, and change your goals from week to week. And there's no reason why you can't adapt those, those goals or those targets as you go through life. But I just, I, th I, think, I think to not have them is the, is the worst thing. You know, they might be a goal and when you get there you set another one and you set another one, but I just could not, I just, Basically, I couldn't imagine going through life without having goals I want to achieve. And I've got them, you know, I know what they are in my head now. And hopefully in three or four years, I will have achieved them and, and we'll see. Brilliant. Okay. Um, what's the most recent goal you've achieved then? I think... I think the most recent goal that I achieved was when we found out that we were losing the rights for full Formula One coverage on BBC Sports. Um, having worked so hard to make it a success, having given so much of myself to it and having won all the awards and having broken records for viewing figures you would have thought great you know my job is secure and then we get the news that you know we've only got half the live races that we did have and I remember saying to myself right I'm now going to prove that we are going to do a better job from now till the end of the Formula One season 
than ever before. I want the next five or six shows to be the best we've ever done, and I think we achieved that. And I think, you know, gal I galvanise the team around me, and I explain to them why we wanted to do it, and, and I really feel like we use that negativity to inspire us to do a better job than ever. So that was my most recent well, achievement, I think. I'm really pleased that it happened. I think it happened. And what has been the biggest uh, challenge you've ever faced? I think the biggest challenge I've ever faced was was um, was probably proving people wrong on the Formula One job because it's so easy for people to auto. You know, people are naturally negative, and you just mustn't let that get you down or it's quite sad or to believe it. it. Yeah, they are. You know, it's, it's very sad. And uh, you know, I when I got the F1 job, everyone was so negative about it. I thought, right, I'm going to prove prove you all wrong and prove that you've you know you've judged me too early, and that was a big deal. Okay, good. So, last question is. Clearly, you are a very positive person. Mm. And seem to be quite sort of similar in our mindset and approach. Yeah. But what do you do? Like, what what kind of things do you do to maintain such a positive outlook? Well, what do I do to maintain a positive? I mean, I think a lot of it is natural, and I think I naturally am just a positive person. Um, but I've, I'm a firm. I'm a huge believer that what you give out is what you get back. And if you go through life sniping about people, being negative about people maybe talking behind people's backs or wishing ill of other people or not giving your all, that's exactly what's going to come back on you. So I, I read a great, great quote once that said, if you give away everything you have, you then have to look elsewhere to find something good. And it would be so easy for me as a TV presenter to think, well, look, I've got a great job and I know a few things about how to make this job work. I'm going to keep it all to myself. But like we sat down and talked about, you know, your future career and I couldn't, give enough advice to people no, who, who want to be on the telly because I think I know all this right and if I then give that to you we then got the same armory so now I need to go and find something else <laughs> I need to find something else that makes me unique and makes me different so it keeps you on your toes all the time and I just think be positive you know just go through life wanting the best for people and they will come back at you yeah, brilliant Jake thank you very much for Pleasure. taking the time absolutely appreciate it thanks good man. man good man